Garden? 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 One of the biggest obsessions Hans has is wanting to come out in the garden all day, every day, particularly when I'm sat at my desk and it can be so distracting. So this week I thought I'd show you how I made this dog kennel to keep him warm, dry and cool. And it's got a detachable roof as well and it's so robust and I absolutely love it. And we currently store his toys in there. Fetch! <laughs> so keep on watching and I'll show you how I made it. So for this project, I'll be testing out the latest one battery power tool range from Erbauer, which are now available in all B&Q stores. And I was really excited about this because I love the idea of not having to worry about cables getting in the way when you're cutting. And I never run out of power once because the fast charger takes up to an hour. Oh, and they've also got brushless motors, so they've got a 25% longer running time. And they're great for using in the garden as well. But more importantly, I was really looking forward to some more professional cuts. Before I got started, I wanted to familiarise myself with my first ever circular saw. So now onto the real deal. I decided to make this with 18mm thick plywood. That way I didn't have to worry about making an internal frame. And I bought two sheets of this, but asked B&Q to reduce it down to 900mm because that's the maximum I can fit in my camper van. And the length of these are 2.44 metres. And although I'd drawn a plan, I initially decided I wanted the side panels to be half this distance. And clamp the wood to my sawhorses, then my spirit level down to use it as a cutting guide. And I really enjoyed how quick and easy this was to make a professional long straight cut. So yeah, not looking back. So now I've got two squares that are 900mm by about 1200mm. And I decided to go for a sloping lean-to design with the front being the tallest and the back would be the shortest. And after measuring hands, I decided a five degree would give him a lot of room. So I've set up my sliding bevel. I've held it against one of the corners on the 900 mil side. And after drawing along it, I then extended that line until I got to the other side. Now I had a bit of difficulty here with the circular saw because it was going slightly against the grain. So for my angled cut, I decided to turn to my jigsaw instead. And this was so much quicker. And once that first panel was done, I removed it and place my uncut panel on the sawhorses and then my newly cut one on top so I could draw along the slope to cut it and create a matching pair. It's not ready yet sir, it's not ready. Oh and just to point out that if you are going to use any plywood that's thinner than this you're probably going to need to create an internal frame as well. And once I've cut both pieces off that I didn't need I then clamped the two together and sanded them down with a sandpaper attachment on the Erbauer cordless multi-tool. And once my two side panels were done, I needed to start working on the front and the back panel. I used my sliding bevel again and set it to the same slope from the lower side of one of the panels and then pulled the red lever on the circular saw. Don't worry, I removed the battery. And then I could adjust the plate to the same angle as the sliding bevel. And now I'm onto my second plywood panel because I've already used the first one up and I made sure I cut my beveled edge first to avoid any mistakes. And at this point, I completely forgot about the guide attachment, so I'll show you that in a minute. Perfect. But I was over the moon with my first bevel cut and I can see this being very useful in the future. And while I'm sanding this down, Hans thought he'd try and help with a ball. Then I needed to measure the tallest side of one of the side panels, but it was very important that I transferred this measurement on this side of the ply because the outer was the tallest area of the bevel. So another way of looking at it, this is the front panel and I'm measuring from the back of it. It's always best to make something bigger rather than smaller because it's easier to deduct than add. And this is when I thought the kennel was just far too big for hands. So I decided to reduce the front panel's width to 800 and the side panel's width to 1100. And I'm quickly just measuring Hans's shoulder width and I thought a 40 centimetre width opening was perfect for him. And this is when I remembered about the track attachment. So I only had to set that one thing up and not have to measure twice when cutting two matching panels. Then for my final panel at the back, I'm repeating that bevel cut first, then my straight cut. Now, although I didn't make an internal frame, I did make a base frame because I wanted to be able to prop it up off the ground 
and something that I'd seen online and I'd really wanted to try out is clamping my structural pieces of timber together and clamp them to the saw horses and cross cut with the circular saw and there will be a full comprehensive shopping list below with all the timber and stuff that I used. This is also pre-treated timber because I wanted my hard efforts to last. And now I'm ready to build my base. And I've just placed an off cut of ply on my saw horses just so I could have a flat level surface so my base frame would rest evenly on it and I could clamp it together easier and make sure it was all square while pre-drilling and screwing together. It was very important I used a countersunk bit as well. I also fixed another long noggin in the center and with some of the off cuts I cut up nine pieces to use as feet and clamped them and screwed them while they were resting on that ply. And then after flipping it upside down, I walked along it and I was really happy with this. Then to give the base some flooring, and I had a few strips of OSB left over and I screwed them directly on top, butting a few together and I used the Urbau jigsaw to trim off all of the excess as I went along. But it was important to me that nothing protruded. Next, I'd popped the base on top of my saw horses. So I got a bit creative and I clamped some off cuts directly underneath and either side so I could use as a shelf or a lip to rest my panels in place accurately and then screw them to the sides. You can also see a strip of plywood to use as a stopper so nothing protruded either. And because I decided to use some trim later on, I used a countersunk bit for these screws as well. And to join the panels together, I used waterproof glue along the cut and I'd actually drawn a line on the front and that was to avoid any misplacement of screws while joining them together. But as I went on, I ran out of places where to clamp my makeshift shelf. So instead, I'd screw a piece underneath temporarily. But when I came to needing to create the door opening on the front, I placed it in situ for now I made measurements to find the equal distance in the center of where I wanted to cut it. I also marked out the base from the front and crudely drew where the flooring was as well, but I wasn't totally happy with this method. So later I just got in myself and drew along where the base lied anyway. Now it's completely up to you if you want your opening to be a curved top or a boxy shape, but I wanted to go for something more stylish. So using an off cut of ply, I drilled a hole so I could fit a pencil inside and position it where the top pencil line went. And I clamped that in place at the top, lined up this strip with the center line and fixed into place with a screw, knowing full well I'm gonna cut this area out later anyway. And then I was able to swing it left and right and draw a curved pencil line at the same time. I just love this technique. So I drilled a hole big enough for the jigsaw blade to slot through and cut along my pencil line. And come on. Yay! And come on. Oh, yay! Happy! And now we're on to a new day. It was chucking it down outside and I had to bring this in my conservatory because I haven't treated it yet and then create a curved edge with the Urbauer's Palm router. Now this is the only tool that I needed to plug in, but a little tip that I recommend for this is to sand the jigsaw edge down first, which I didn't do, and then router over a straighter edge. But I knew that after sanding it and painting it, it would all look fine in the end. I also smoothed it from behind as well, because I didn't like the idea of it catching on Hans's fur. And this is when I also started making the detachable lid. And all I did was just clamp some more structural pieces of wood around it to get a square edge. But I also made my cuts five mil longer throughout, so I had more give while lifting it on and off. The other feature that I'd never had before in a jigsaw, which I thought was really cool, was being able to adjust the base on this as well for some mitered cuts. And I needed a couple of these because it was a sloping roof. And now it's dry again, I took the opportunity to coat it all over with a preserver, but I purposely didn't do the inside because it's toxic, and I was gonna add felt to the roof anyway to make it waterproof. So very similar to the base that I made, I'm using the off cuts that I got when B&Q reduced the width down to 900, and marking where they lie, and then cutting them down, and screwing them down until I got to the end. I 
I also used some more structural offcuts so I could screw the panels directly down to them. Also, I made sure there were gaps along the side of them so I could easily slot the roof on and off. But I had to temporarily attach them and then mark and screw them down where they lied. I did actually make sure the width of my kennel was narrower than a meter width of this roll. Now, I do consider this kennel fairly big, so I wanted to make sure the felt roof stayed in place and I coated it with a felt adhesive almost all over. But I paid a lot of attention to the joins and where the screws were so it would all smooth out and make it a flat, even surface. I also found a lot of places recommended a five centimeter overhang so you could fold it around your project. So after making sure it was even, I applied pressure with a clean paint roller and then hammered down the edges using some clout nails. And then to tidy up the corners, I sliced along the crease with a Stanley knife, took it under, and then hammer down that overlap, and then remove any excess along the bottom with the Stanley knife again. So now that my clear preserver is definitely dried, I gave it three coats of the same waterproof shed stain that I've used on our shed and garage door. And although I was gonna add some trim later, I felt like it was lacking something. So I decided I wanted to make a personalized plaque, but something that gave me a lot of inspiration was on one of the days it started to rain, Hans walked on some of the plywood, leaving some wet paw prints. And I took a photo of that, uploaded it to the computer, coloured the paw in, shrunk it down on a Word document, and placed it along the side of his name, which I then printed out and glued it onto some old pine that I had so I could use it as a template with my router. And I thought I'd work on his paw first. I had so much fun doing this, and I used a straight imperial bit for this that I already had. And then I sanded it completely back down to bare wood and found some old black spray paint in the garage and sprayed it into my routed area so it would stand out. And once it was dry, I sanded that back down again and then I randomly thought this would look cool as a dog bone shape. So the jigsaw became really useful again and after sanding down the edges, I gently painted with the same stain on the kennel and left it to dry and placed it upside down and sprayed the edges black and then followed with some spray varnish. And a project is always exciting when you get to the last part. And that is staining the trim. And then after cutting them down to size, I drilled more holes around it and screwed into place with screws and a washer for detail. But before you start trying to fix those in place, it's a good idea to mark where the clout nails lie so you know they're not gonna get in the way. And of course, I had to recoat any of the new cuts that I made. And for the final job, I then cut my pieces of trim down so I could cover any of the end grains and cover any of the screws. And for this, I applied construction adhesive, held them into place, and again, attached with screws and washers to match. So that's it for this one. I am particularly happy with how it turned out. And if you'd like to make one yourself, but you didn't quite follow the video, there's a full step-by-step -step blog post below with everything. And um, if you do anything differently, feel free to comment below. And I think that's it. So um, yeah, if you liked it, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe. And hopefully I'll see you in the next one and I best get back to trimming my tree down. Thanks for watching. Bye.